Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my homeworm farming channel. If you're looking for an active community that's ready to help and answer your questions, you are in the right place. Ask away, there are no stupid questions. Today, we're going to get a harvest from my worm castings of my European Nightcrawler bin, and I'm gonna show you how I apply them to my garden for maximum value. So let's dig in and get some castings, and let's sift out those big chunks and worms so that we can use them in the garden. Then we're going to come over here and move the wedge over so that we can feed them again and keep that pipeline of worm castings moving. Okay, so as you can see, there is a little bit of mold on top here. It is actually almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 80% humidity in the basement right now. So anything that's on the top here is uh, pretty much gonna be exposed to those kind of conditions. And I find that sometimes any of the sugars or what have you are going to uh, grow a little bit of mold in here. So that just shows that there is active biology happening in my worm castings. Now these are awfully wet. So honestly, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get very much out of here that is harvestable, at least from my normal method. So what I think I'm going to do today is I'm just going to grab these up and I am going to set them aside and we're going to uh, maybe just feed raw castings this time. That'll actually be a first for me because normally I sift all of my castings. But I could use some right now to top up my uh, erased beds and also my container gardening to uh, make sure to keep the biology alive in those very small systems. So let me just grab a little bucket and we'll grab some off the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab off the top here. You'll notice that there aren't any worms up here. They have already moved on to the feeding section. So that is one of the great things about the wedge is that when you let this part over here dry off, or in theory dry off, and then feed them a good size feeding at the opposite end, the worms leave on their own and you don't even have to uh, do a light migration, which is what I sometimes end up doing in some of my much smaller bins. So this is a, I think a three gallon or two and a half gallon bucket. So I'm just gonna fill this up as that's a, a good amount to use as a top dressing. That's one of the things, when you're using the worm tea, you don't need as much, but when you're using straight castings to top up, then you are going to need a greater amount. So let's just take this and move it over, keeping all of that on that side there, so that I can keep the wedge moving. That's one of the things that makes this system work, is the constant moving over of the older stuff, so that you can add more food and bedding gives the castings time to cure, dry out, and gives the worms time to move. So I'm, that's really great. I'm not seeing hardly any worms in here at all. Of course, my, my actual fear is that that little baby possum that was in the basement ate some worms. I'm really not sure what all possums eat, but uh, I'm concerned it may have been some worms. But he's back outside now, and uh, hopefully will not find his way back in here again because Anne's going to be smarter and not leave the door open at night. <laughs> All right, let's move you over so we can see the feeding zone. All right, so we're back over at the feeding zone and last time we did a huge, huge feeding. There was six gallons of bedding and five gallons of food, and I made kind of a sandwich with it. Somebody was asking me if I freeze my food, and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But if I do feed the, you know, freeze the food, what I try to do is thaw it out at least a little bit before I feed it to the worms. And then I create kind of a bedding food sandwich so that the worms aren't really exposed to the super cold food. But these are European night crawlers. They are perfectly fine in cold temperatures. So it's not really that big of a deal. If it was with the African night crawlers, I would definitely not put cold food in there. So let's, uh, let's look around here and see what these guys have done over the last four weeks. So you can tell that it is really, really damp. But it also, you can see that they have already made an amazing amount of progress on this food and bedding. 
they are just tearing through it. So when you get that ideal temperature and moisture, these guys just absolutely are monsters going through and getting things completed. I mean, that's, that's four weeks and there's probably five or eight pounds of worms in here. I can't remember. I did split the bin um, because it was getting to be too much. I didn't think the worms were gonna grow if they kept having much cramped space. This is an avocado pit, and this has only been in here a couple of months, so the increase in temperature in the basement is really helping them process those hard-to-consume uh, foods. And it's not really so much the worms that's doing this initial breakdown. It's the microbes, the fungi, and the um, microscopic life forms that live in the bin. That ginger is still in there. I think that was around Christmas time, so you're looking at like eight months ago. Okay, so hopefully we'll get a worm ball because I am not seeing very many worms. Get kind of these big chunks out of the way. They do love playing inside of their little mango pits. Here's a fuzzy one they haven't eaten the fuzz off of. So let's dig in here and see what we have. That potato, they're working on it. I think we saw that last time. Got some corn. I don't know. I smell something lemony. Maybe, no, that was not a potato. That was a lime. Yep, lime. It takes them a while to get into it, but that's fine. It's always good to have a mix of fast and slow food in the bin. Um, that way... You know, they kind of have something to spare so they don't blow through everything at once. It is really compacted. So far, it seems as though they've, you know, eaten all the food, except for those really slow things. Also, still not seeing very many worms. So everybody cross your fingers that I'm going to find a big worm ball under here. Not really a big worm ball. Also, interesting enough, it is actually less wet over here, and I did feed my usual prepared bedding over here. Okay, so it... I don't know that I think this is as many worms that should be in this bin. There is a possibility that some of the worms were consumed by that little baby possum that was trapped in my basement for a while. Well, the good news is the worms have more room to spread out, for sure. The bad news is uh, they became possum poo. Well, it's the natural order of things. I'm not going to be upset at a critter for doing what it is meant to do. It was my stupidity that left the door open during a bonfire so that it would be easier for people to come and go. So fix one thing, break another. It'll be all right. They will repopulate. So it does not look like I have the five or eight pounds of worms in here anymore. More like three or four. But in this nice warm weather, they will recoup um, very quickly. I'm not going to uh, look for a bunch of cocoons yet, but hopefully they will bounce back in time for the winter so that we can keep on trucking. All right, let's get them some new bedding and some new food. Okay, so if you wanted to know what the recipe is for my prepared bedding, I will put a link at the end of this video so that you can see how I make it. I make this a couple weeks in advance so that the water has a chance to soak in and start to soften things up so that the worms can go through it faster. My, my idea is to use up the resources that I have and to also get castings made as quick as possible. And the prepared bedding is one of those things that helps me do that. There's a big mix of fast and slow food here. I uh, just harvested my cabbage 
the other day and so these cabbage stems are going to be here for a very long time so there are six of them then there's some avocado skin and pits there's some corn here and as you can see it's still not completely thawed so we're going to put that away from the worms but this will be in the bin for probably five or six months and uh, then the fast food of the tomatoes and peppers and squash so that will give them a good combination that should hold them over for the three or four weeks until I get in here again. Uh, one of the things that I am going to do is I'm going to cover this up really well with some more bedding. So hopefully we will see a nice population explosion here in the next time we come in so that they have... Uh, they definitely have the room in order to do that explosion. Okie doke. So let's go outside and put those castings to good use. Okay, here we are at Grandpa Pepper, which had the most votes for having side dressing done on the video. Uh, but to be fair, I'm probably going to do more than one because this is a five gallon uh, pot. And so how I will do it in this will be a little bit different than what I do it in my in-ground bed. Let me hang you off the side of the pot here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a handful of these here and I am going to scratch it into the soil on both sides of the plant. Kinda trying to get it in the dirt a little bit on both sides and then I will water it in. And that's all there is to it for my five gallon container with Grandpa Pepper. At least one person was wondering what happened to those peppers that had been looking kind of puny in my last video where I showed you how to make the simple worm tea. And here we are, they have all greened up and they are starting to produce fruit. And I have tasted one of these that fell off. And even though it is going to be as big as a bell pepper, it is as spicy as a jalapeno, maybe even a little bit more so. So, which is good for me. And this plant over here, has quite a few of the uh, peppers on them. So I'm very excited. So for this container, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull the mulch off to the side and then I'm going to give them a couple handfuls and then put the mulch right back on top. I won't uh, water that in right now because it is supposed to rain a little bit later, but that's how I work on my peppers. This is my shishito pepper bed. This is a 100 gallon grow bag that I built this year. And each little shishito will just get a, a handful of castings right at the base there. Okay, this uh, squash is being a bit of an overachiever, so we're going to have to definitely try and crawl in there a little bit. The bees are absolutely loving all of the squash blooms this year. I had no idea that they would be absolutely this popular. I think they're actually outperforming all of my intended flowers for the pollinators. So who knew? All I had to do was plant some <laughs> melons and squash and all of the, the bees would be happy. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting it around the base of the plant, not uh, putting it over the entire raised bed. I usually do that at the end of the season. One thing about not sifting the castings is I will probably get a bunch of other random things growing in this bed now that I haven't sifted, but that'll be okay. I will just uh, weed them out. So let's back up here and show you what is going on. Oh, 
Okay, so pretty much all of this has happened since June 1st. Absolutely an insane amount of growth. And uh, these are not in the ground. The, they are growing in raised beds that was made out of bagged soil, uh, the native garden soil, and probably about 10 to 15 pounds or gallons of worm castings for each one when I uh, first built them. So they are super happy. The melons look less happy, but I have a feeling there's something eating on them. So I will have to get them a fuller feed of the worm tea uh, when I get done here. All right, guys, well, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and my garden. And everybody, have a good day.